So you want to learn Unity 3D. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my top tips that I've picked up from teaching Unity 3D for more than 15 years and using it for my own projects. Tip number one, learn to code. Unity may not be the best first game engine to learn, um, but no matter what game engine you're going to tackle, I highly recommend, particularly with Unity, that you learn how to code. There's a million different websites that they can teach you how to code. A bunch of great languages that you could use to learn to code. You could try Scratch or Python or Visual Basic or C Sharp, basically anything. If you learn any language, because learning code is about learning the logic. It's not about the syntax. It doesn't matter that you've learned a different language because you can apply what you've learned to, uh, to Unity 3D and to the C Sharp programming language. And no matter what you try, uh, you can look at visual scripting and you can look at different ways to uh, avoid code. If you're going to make a game in Unity 3D, you're going to have to learn how to code. If you can't decompose a problem into a sequence selection and iteration like any other programming language, you're going to get frustrated trying to follow tutorials that you don't understand. And worse still, when, you don't, when they don't work, you're going to have no idea how to fix them or what went wrong. So my biggest tip, tip number one, learn to code. Learn to read to code, learn to modify code, learn to debug code, and lastly, learn to write code before you complicate the crap out of it, trying to throw in a huge game API with hundreds of classes, hundreds of new data types, and hundreds of thousands of lines of code, and an equal amount of documentation. Which leads me on to my next important point, tip number two, leverage the experts. The Unity's huge community is both a blessing and a curse. I've googled things in Unity and been met with less than ideal videos, you know the ones. Um, you need to be picky about the source of the video. My highest recommendation is that you go to the source and look at Unity Learn. As a first place to go to learn how to use Unity, you're guaranteed quality and you're guaranteed that this stuff will just work and that it's new and that it's modern. It's got a ton of professionally polished tutorials that are up to date and well made. There's also pathways uh, and you can filter courses by topic and difficulty so you can find just what you, uh, what you need in order to learn. And that leads me to the next point really that you've got to be prepared to just learn stuff and um, learn around your subject. You're not always going to find a good tutorial that shows you exactly what you want but you might find a great tutorial that helps you to get there on your own. As a teacher, there's nothing more annoying than students expecting to be able to just Google exactly what they want and doing the very first tutorial that pops up at the top of the list without looking any further. Sometimes if you want to draw a frog, you might need to learn how to draw a fish and then you can take what you've learned in drawing that fish and draw your frog. And the same goes for programming. So on to tip number three. So when you're using Unity. Unity has changed a ton since I started using it more than 15 years ago. And one of the things that I uh, really um, struggle with or when I have students they always struggle with is that newer is not always better. Um, Unity's popularity with professional game developers has really shifted their focus away from us beginners. Um, it, it's done it for a good reason. It's faster, it's more powerful tools. Unfortunately, that often means that these tools are more complicated to learn and definitely more complicated to use. Um, even when you start out a new project, you're faced with a choice of three different render pipelines. And there's a good reason for that. Um, it used to be an awful lot simpler and uh, it's easier for us beginners to learn when it was simpler. Um, so my big tip, uh, tip number three, is use the default everything. The core templates um, and the built-in render pipeline. Don't use the new input system unless you absolutely have to um, because you're maybe following a tutorial that it tells you exactly how to set it up. And straight on to tip number four. Uh, 3D is easier. I know this is going to be um, a little bit contentious, but when I've seen students struggle for weeks to make a simple 2D character controller that just about behaves the way that they want it, um, you know that I'm kind of speaking from experience. The reason for this is that the game engine is designed around components, which I'm going to talk about quite soon. And each of those components do something. The whole idea of a game engine is to try and abstract out some of the difficult stuff uh, the repeated stuff, the things that game designers are going to need over and over and make it easy for them to implement. Unfortunately, um, Unity, uh, Unity 3D, uh, it, it, 
doesn't really do that particularly well with some of the uh, 2D components. And I know there are a lot of 2D games out there. Uh, the simple uh, fact that there isn't even a 2D character controller, yet there's one in 3D, um, makes me think that I, I don't understand why Unity hasn't continued to develop in that 2D direction, given how many um, how many 2D games are out there that are popular inside of Unity and how much um, simpler it's perceived that 2D games are to uh, start coding with. I'll just quickly show you one example of this. If you look at the nav mesh agent, this is a 3D component that you can add on to any, um, any game object and it creates, uh, it allows it to pathfind and follow um, around a map uh, that you've set up inside of Unity. The amount of code, because the agent uh, abstracts a lot of that information out there. So the amount of code that you actually require to get this agent to um, move to a destination is literally just one line. Um, you tell it where you want it to go and it pathfinds around the map that's been set up inside the Unity editor. So the component abstracts out all of that information and all of that hard code is done by the uh, by Unity so that you don't have to do it over and over and over again. If you compare that to 2D, it simply doesn't exist inside of the uh, Unity game engine. So say you had a bunch of sprites around the screen and you wanted a, a character to be able to move around those sprites and not bang into them. It just, it doesn't exist, but it does inside of 3D. I mean, you can go on GitHub and you can find some stuff, um, but these are these are like third party people. These are just some um, random programmers who've realized that there's something missing from the Unity game engine and tried to implement something that we can use. But it just doesn't make any sense to me why um, if Unity is such a big company, why they can't have that already in there. So it just, uh, just go back to the point that um, just make sure that you uh, are aware that uh, 2D is not necessarily easier than 3D, particularly with the fact that the 3D provides you with all that opportunity for all of the lighting and all of the, the uh, collisions and all of the physics um, just straight out of the box. Which leads me on to tip number five, components. So components are the absolute essential thing to understand when you start working with Unity 3D. I'm just gonna give you a quick example. Um, if I've got a simple scene and I add myself a game, a game object to this, a cube, the components are, are the things on the right hand side in the inspector that make up all the information about this uh, game object. The transform component contains things like its position where you can like directly type straight in if you want to. Um, you can also do that obviously in 3D. And the rotation is also there and its scale is also there. Um, you can do all these things visually in the editor, but the, the key thing to understand is that these components are what make up that game object. I mean, if we look down here at the mesh renderer just by switching it on and switching it off you can see that it actually um, affects the game object quite a bit because no mesh renderer means you can't see the thing and it includes things like materials you could change those if you wanted to so components are a key principle to understand when starting to learn unity the other key thing is that you can add and remove components so uh, you can i'm just move this one up i'm going to make myself a ground um for this i'm going to create a 3d object i'm going to create a cube i'm going to call this ground and i'm going to set its position just straight to zero and i'm going to make it scale something a little bit bigger so um 20 by 20 and then just i accidentally created a one i didn't need so i'll just drag this cube up so if we look back at this cube here um the the key um, components that we've already looked at, the transform and its mesh render in order to show it and its material, we can also add new components in here. So say we wanted to have some physical um, representation of this body, we've already got a collider in here. So we could add a rigid body to this. A rigid body is simply a component that gives it a mass, a drag, angular drag. All these things can be changed. If I hit play now in my inside my editor, um, the camera should be looking at it. If I hit play now, you'll see that the rigid body component made this cube drop to the ground. Whereas if I switch gravity off and um, hit play, you'll see that now that doesn't hit the ground because it doesn't have gravity. Um, that's the key understanding or the key concept behind um, these components. They all add functionality onto game objects.
But where does all that information come from? How do you know what that functionality is? Well, that's where tip number six, read the docs, comes in. This really is one of those um, moments when you're teaching where um, kids who may have been learning Unity for a while uh, suddenly go, oh my God, you can do that. Um, if you want to know more about this rigid body component, um, there's this tiny, tiny little question mark that um, goes unseen. It says open references for rigid body. Um, other than other um, hovering over, things is pretty important in, uh, inside of Unity. But if you click on that uh, that little question mark, what you end up being uh, being taken to is the um, documentation, the local stored documentation. So it's not even required that you're uh, connected to the internet for this, that gives you information about that particular component. So there's never an excuse for uh, saying, what does that do? Because um, you can find out absolutely everything for every single component. All the docs are linked and they're really, really, really good. Um, one of the key things when you start to code is that you can also switch to scripting um, inside that same thing. So you can end up having the scripting reference, which has um, thousands of lines and explanations that's been all checked and peer reviewed and updated depending on um, the version that you're currently working on. So it's all perfect in here. And for any one of the, um, any one of the things that you might ask yourself what can we do with this component well all these components have these properties that can be accessed in code and they also have functions methods they're called um in c sharp that you can act on so should you um when you start to code things you want to maybe um make sure you click on that tick so that you understand what's going on for example using an add force um the, once you have the rigid body, you can add force. And this is why earlier on I mentioned to understand um, how to read code, because once you can understand how to read code, copying and pasting this will not work. Um, you need to read this as an example, as it stands, understand what's going on so that you can use just what you need from it. Which leads me on to tip number six, that scripts affect components. So this is a really key concept. I'm going to create um, a very, very simple script in here for the um, for the rigid body component. We're going to actually grab that rigid body component. We're going to use that add force function just before I'm playing this in double speed so that we don't have to hang around waiting for me. But once I've created the script, one of the key things that you need to do is you just need to get that component and you do this with get component and that's it's a long winded way of doing it, but it just is what's happening. You get that component so that you're able to access any of the methods on it. And I'm just going to add a vector three for adding that force. By jumping back into the code, what you should see is that it shoots off in the direction because what we've done is we've added a force to it, which is exactly what you would expect from um, the add force function. So what's happening here is that this script, which sits um, here in this game object, uses the method get component to get a handle to this component. And as we know from looking at the documentation, once we have this component, we are able to access any of the properties of this component and any of the functions inside this component, meaning that we can do whatever we want within the bounds of what this uh, component is designed for. Tip number eight, the mysterious mono behavior. Um, when you created, uh, when we created the script earlier on, um, you'll see a default script inside of the Unity game engine inherits for mono behavior. This is one of the things that uh, beginners in programming or creating Unity games, they do this and they never realize exactly what's going on. They never understand that this is the key to uh, the Unity game. This script right here, it's not a C sharp, um, it's not just a C sharp class, it inherits from mono behavior. And uh, one of the things that kids uh, and people learning how to do Unity need to understand is what the mono behavior is. The um, important classes, this is the documentation for mono behavior, and it's pretty sparse. Um, what it basically says is that uh, there are some events. Things like start happens when the game starts. Things like update happens every frame. There's a fixed update where you're supposed to do all of your physics um, inside that fixed update. And there is a ton of other ones involving things like on collision enter and on trigger enter. The scripting API for this exact same thing shows all of the things that can be done, all of the um, messages that are sent and when they're sent. Things like on collision enter and on trigger enter. For example, um, on trigger enter is an event that is fired on any object that has a script on it 
that uh, has a trigger object on it. I'll show you in an example right now. If I had this cube and I wanted to check if there was something running into this cube, um, I would probably not need a rigid body on it, but I would certainly need a collider on it that, that described the shape of that object. And just by ticking this is trigger enter, then we can see that the, um, the object is a trigger and any script that is on this um, we could use the on trigger enter method. So we could just do the on trigger enter. You can see that we'll get the whole function, the event gets uh, written for us um, and it takes in, uh, receives one parameter, which is the other object that touches this trigger. And then we can deal with it um, however we want to by um, perhaps maybe deleting this object if it's maybe a pickup or by telling another game object that we've been picked up and that their score needs to go, go up. And that the elusive mono behavior is one of those key things that you need to understand and the power of the mono behavior is pretty huge. And so it's one of the key things that you really should concentrate on when learning how to use Unity 3D for the first time. Tip number nine, exposing variables. So we have this uh, cube in here. I'm going to show you a quick example of it, um, what I mean by exposing variables. So right now, this script creates some behavior by grabbing the rigid body component and applying a certain force to it. We can create variables inside of our class up the top. So if I make a, a variable of type float and I call it speed and I make it equal to something like, uh, I don't know, 20, um, the value here that we've created, um, currently it's hidden. So we can't see it anywhere other than inside of this code. Let's just add it into here. So let's use it as the upward force for the, um, for the uh, add force uh, method over here. Um, this will work as expected. So on update every single frame, it will add a force um, upwards of whatever speed is of the value of 20. Um, when we run this, what we should see is that it does pretty much what it would you would expect. It goes straight up in the air with a value of 20. The cool thing, however, though, is if we go back to the script and we add the word public before it, by uh, we click Control S to save this and just go straight back. Now, if we look at the cube and we see the script, we'll see right now that the value speed has now been exposed inside the editor, just like a lot of the other components. They've also got things that you can see inside the component. And now we have the power to do that within our own scripts. So we're able to make um, something so we don't have to go back into the code to change, and we can change the values here. So I could, for example, make this five, so it's a much smaller value, and I haven't changed the script. I haven't done anything to the script, and I hit play, and it will go up with a speed of five. If I maybe change that to one, we can do that again and we can hit play. You'll see it's much smaller. And I can't really stress enough how important that is and being able to do that inside of your games. Now tip number 10, the input class. This, we want some input for our users. So what I'm gonna do is in the background here, I'm just creating um, a variable and we use this um, input dot get access method. Now it's one of the things that it's hard to find and you see tutorials about it, but um, where you find that information is you find that inside of uh, the Unity editor itself. So if I just quickly jump back, I can go to edit preferences and then click on input. And you'll see that all of the axes that are available to you have already been set up. And these are all the common ones like horizontal, vertical, and fire. And you have to use exactly the name that it's highlighted there. You can even in fact, um, make more or, or duplicate them and change them to so that you've got a pretty flexible system for any keys that you want. So don't forget input, look it up in the docs. It's an absolute bomb and it's quite tough to find. So uh, the result of the code is as you'd expect, moving right and left, adds forces right and left to the box. So look it up and uh, enjoy using that one. So in the final words, just practice, practice, practice. If you're committed to learning games, then just keep practicing. Make lots and lots of games, make lots of mistakes. It's the only way to learn. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll stop before it gets any longer. Thanks for watching. It's been a real fun making this one and uh, join me in the next one.